Hi, my name is Lauren and you're on my channel uh, Lauren's Lines and today I am painting a rainbow trout. Anyway, as you can see I already started the watercolour and the drawing for this one and I actually started them when I was at work on my lunch break. And what it sort of got me thinking of is drawing and painting when you're in public or you know, getting past the ugly stage when people can see what you're doing. So obviously at my lunch break we're in the lunch room um, and all the other people that I work with are also in the lunch room on their lunch breaks. Um, and they can see what I'm doing and, you know, the first couple of stages of a watercolour painting are never the prettiest. So I just thought maybe I would give you my tips on how to, you know, draw or paint, or paint people or draw people uh, in public with people around and how to sort of get over that, like, the fear, you know, painting and drawing, which is, you know, a novel thing and people are going to pay attention sometimes. So my first tip is to have a minimal art supplies. And so I will always have just like the one tool that I'm using in my hand and maybe a rubber in my lap and the book out and that's it. Um, if I'm doing watercolour I've got a really tiny little watercolour palette that I'll have with me and a bit of paper towel, my aqua brush pen that I'm using at the moment and that's it and I'll try and take up as little space as possible because you'll be quite more <laughs> inconspicuous than if you have like pens everywhere and a huge book and you've made a mess and you don't know where anything is and you're rummaging around like it's really obvious what you're doing um, whereas if you keep it small it's not too bad as well as having like a small sketchbook. I mean, this one that I've got at the moment is really small. Um, it's less than A5, but like an A5 sketchbook that's about the same size as a notebook. Yeah, so that helps as well. So keeping it inconspicuous, not taking up so much space. Everyone else can have their lunch on the lunch desk as small as I can. So my next tip is one that is really ridiculous. I mean, they're all a little bit ridiculous because they're all sort of like getting your brain into the right mindset, but is to have something finished on the page or on the opposite page to the one you're working on so like or have like a one part of your drawing pre-finished so that there's something on the page that if somebody looks over your shoulder and is like oh that looks nice you know you've got something there to give you that little bit of confidence so their eye is automatically going to be drawn to the nice finished bit rather than like the scratchy sketchy thing that you're doing at the moment and i also find that having something finished on the page when i'm out in public i'm feeling a little bit more self-conscious i'm like worried about what i'm doing a little bit more because people are seeing it, and I want them to think that I'm good at it. You know, having something there just gives me a little bit of confidence. Like, yeah, see that? I did that. I can do it again. This is how it's. This is how it goes. This is how it starts. It starts ugly. Yeah, and it just means that the ugly stage of your drawing is less of a big deal. The third thing that I wanted to mention is don't mention it. Like, because if you go in, you're like, oh, guys, I'm just going to do a drawing. You know, like, don't think anything bad of it. Like, just don't pay attention or. I mean, if you draw attention to it, obviously people can be like, oh, what are you drawing? How long have you been drawing for? And it's going to make make it a thing. Whereas if you just sit down and start going, I mean, half the time people probably won't even notice because they're all in their own little bubble anyway. Also, the posture that you have when you're drawing and painting is so similar to if you were writing in a notebook. Or, And obviously like your hands are doing something different than if you're on the phone. But if you're sitting at a table on your phone, like the posture that your whole body has is all very similar to if you are drawing and painting. So if someone's looking down at their phone across the room, they're not even going to notice <laughs> you're painting, probably. Um, and that's why having a smaller sketchbook kind of helps because it's the same size as like a notebook. Yeah, you could just be writing something in a notebook. Nobody really knows unless they're like looking right over your shoulder or sitting opposite you or anything like that, um, which is fine too. And my fourth thing is, especially if you're looking to paint or draw in your workplace or in the lunchroom or around your friends or your family, is to learn to talk and draw at the same time, which is quite a difficult skill and I'm still perfecting it. Um, I do tend to get a little bit antisocial when I'm drawing. Um, but if you can manage to hold a conversation, people are then paying attention to the conversation and not what you're doing. And they're probably on their phones at the same time as well because that's just the day and age that we live in now. So learning to talk and draw is another one. I don't remember when I first started to cut hair because I'm a barber, talking and cutting hair was very hard at the same time but now if I'm not talking I feel like something's wrong so I know it is a skill that you can like practice and get better at um, and that helps it be less weird that you're drawing because if you're drawing and not talking <laughs> and like really zoned into what you're doing which sometimes I do get to still um, it can be a little bit more conspicuous uh, the fifth thing is to completely opposite to talking and drawing is to practice sitting on your own um, and this is more for you know going out to cafes or to the park or the library or anywhere else where you might be drawing on your own and you don't want everybody you know like I know the first couple of times I went to draw and 
be on my own you feel like oh my god everyone's gonna notice me that I've got no friends and I'm sitting here on my own that's so weird you know it's gonna be weird that I'm sitting out on my own and no one's gonna like everyone's gonna be like oh what is she doing and then you're gonna be like oh she's drawing like what a freak um but it's not like that at all and so even if you go out for a couple of excursions of just going to the cafe by yourself and getting a coffee on your own or sitting in the park by yourself without any friends and just enjoying the scenery appreciate what's around you like really enjoy being there on your own it becomes a lot more relaxing and a lot more pleasant to then be drawing on your own and you don't feel as inconspicuous because um, it is quite a normal thing to be sitting somewhere on your own I think it's quite strange to go places with your friends <laughs> but that's because I don't have any friends um no like I do like having practiced this after you know feeling really self-conscious about it because I do like I really enjoy going places on my own and you know just being on my own it's all good my company's great yeah and then the next thing is earphones hat and sunglasses so earphones especially if you're inside even in that sort of work situation you can put your earphones in and it's sort of a signal to everyone else that you know like i'm doing my own thing i don't really want to talk um which just sound very antisocial but i know that if you work in a situation like i do or barbering where you're talking to someone all the time um or like retail or beauty it would probably be the same where you're interacting with people all day and then when you get your lunch break you just want to not talk to anybody so a lot of people will just put their earphones in and then sometimes there's like five of us in the back room and we've all just got our earphones in not talking to each other and that's fine because we all need a break and we all understand that we need a break so earphones are great for that they also help in a cafe you know it does sort of signal that i'm not up for chat i'm doing stuff you know that kind of thing same as when you're out and about and when you are out and about like outside having a hat and sunglasses does sort of work as like a little invisibility shield you know you can kind of hide behind sunglasses are great because you can look at people and draw people without them knowing that you're staring right at you i mean they probably know but you know you get a little bit of leeway with that and a hat as well i often find especially if i'm going out to draw people or the landscape or anything like that outside i feel like if i don't have my hat on i feel really naked and exposed and that people can see me because i can't hide under my cap which is silly because obviously i'm still there I'm just wearing a hat um but it's also good to be sun safe um yeah and hiding your face a little bit so it helps with the anonymity of just being a random person drawing not like you lauren is out drawing you know it's just a random person in a hat uh the seventh thing is if you're drawing people is to pick spots where people don't look and so people are notorious for not looking up um so if you can find somewhere where you can sit above somebody and look down on them that's ideal because they will never ever look up so cafes and i don't know if it's bookshop cafes in particular or just cafes with two floors where on the second floor you can look down on the first is great because if you can sit there and like look down at the people they will never ever ever look up and you can stare straight at them It'd be really obvious and they never see you it's great i know there's another bookshop with a cafe on the second floor and you can look down on the people shopping for books or the people at the cash register and stuff and they never look up which is great and i guess if you live in an apartment building you probably see the same thing like people walking past and never look up which is bizarre because there's so much above you but they just never look up so that's a great one um and the second one is pick people that are sort of far off or with enough things in between you and them that they don't notice you um, so my favourite one is Printer Street Gardens here in Edinburgh on a beautiful sunny day. Everybody goes out and sits in the sun on their lunch break. And so you can pick people that are even facing you, but if they're like five, ten metres away and there's more people in between the two of you, but those people are sort of like moving or there's a footpath in between, they're not going to see that you're staring at them and drawing them. <laughs> um, but wearing your sunglasses helps with that as well. So then they can't, like even if they do see that you're looking in their general direction, they can't tell that you're looking at them um and that's a really good one for picking because it's nice to be able to get people that are facing you so you can get their faces in their drawings i used to always do people that were facing the other way because then they couldn't see me but then you just get a lot of drawings in the back of people's heads which i'm a barber and i look at that all day and it's so boring um yeah so yeah picking people that are further away and not likely to look at you or looking down on people and they never ever ever look up which is great it might be a hard hard one to find but if you can find a spot like that it's awesome and my last one is just to start out of the blue just start doing it i know i, I had this current job i would like when i first started i started drawing in the lunchroom and it was totally normal and it became the thing that i did like 
didn't mention it. Yeah, I just always draw. I'm just trying to practice. But I remember at my old work, I didn't always used to draw um, in my lunch break. Um, and when I started, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be a thing. Like people are going to notice. And they did notice. Um, but when they ask you about it, you just say, oh, I'm just, just practicing. I just want to get better. And that's it. That's all it has to be. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I want to be an artist one day. And I'll get there eventually. You're just like, yeah, I'm just practicing. I just want to get better. Um, yeah. So that's what I've got for this video. It's a pretty long one and a bit rambly, but hopefully it's useful for you. Um, so here's the shots of how my fish turned out in the end. I think it's quite different from how it looked in the beginning when it was in its ugly stages, when my manager was sitting across from me watching me do it. Leave me a comment, like, and subscribe, and let me know what you do to, you know, get over the fear of drawing in front of people and that sort of stuff. Alrighty, thanks. Bye.